What's up, everyone? All right, so today was a really crazy day. I mean, uh, it was like back to back, huge moves and huge rejections. It was really dramatic. And I honestly, right now, I'm just like, I want to get out while the going is good. Today's kind of annoying too, because you know what? I actually hit my daily goal in my first two trades by like 7.35. 7.35 AM, I hit my daily goal and I was like, all right, here we go. And then what do I do? Next trade, gave back half. It's like, ah, oh, shoot. What do I do next trade? Now I'm red. I'm down 1300 on the day. So I go from up five grand to down 1300. And then I slowly recovered all the way back up to 6,000. And then I dropped down to up about 3,800 about 3,000 and then got back up to 4,800. And as, as I sit right now, I'm at $5,000 on the day, $5,003 and 13 cents. But look at this p &L. look at how many stocks I traded. It's like 10 different stocks. Oops, let's see, I'll bring this back up. And so the last thing that I just saw as I got ready to do this recap, so we've got two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 stocks. I'm green on six out of the 10. The last stock I traded was GSIW. That one put me up to 6,000 on the day, and then I ended up going red on it, and I'm up, I'm down 500 on that stock. So, but let's look at um, ZEO for a second. ZEO, this is a stock that I'm also red on. I'm down um, 1,700 bucks on it, and it just now squeezed up to $4. It came up to four, and I was like, whoa, look at that. And then look what happened on the next candle. It goes from four all the way down to 305. A full dollar rejection. Look at that. And it's on a ton of volume too, a million shares of volume in those two 10 second candles. And that's exactly what it did before. And before this is where I was trading it through this area and I made a thousand dollars on it and then boom, went red. So I'm red 1700 on Zio and GSIW. This one, I mean, just really like ridiculous range from 240 up to three up to 380 up to 420 then it goes all the way down to 315 rallies back up to 460 goes up to 520 drops down to 450 back up to five back to 450 back to five back to 450 back to five back to 450 and then flushing back down towards 380. so like and that was just i mean these are just a couple of them so wow all right we had a lot of volatility now, there's a part of me here that's feeling like these last couple of days I've been over trading. I was over trading. And, and you know, I, I think the reason I was over trading yesterday was a little bit of FOMO from GLMD on the day before. You know, GLMD makes this crazy huge move. What was it on Tuesday? And, I, you know, I didn't feel like I could break the ice on it. I didn't have that great of a day. And I keep watching this thing going higher and higher and higher and higher. And while I had the discipline not to trade it, it definitely sitting and watching it gave me some FOMO. And then when I sat down yesterday and I started trading, I started aggressive out of the gates. And I really think it was FOMO from GLMD. I was just like overcompensating. And so, you know, if you recall from yesterday, I actually doubled my daily goal yesterday. I was actually up $12,000 and I went all the way back to flat. Just so dumb. Now I ended up rallying back up and as I rallied back up, I got myself back to up whatever it was, 5,000 or something like that on the day. But it was just a messy day and I overtraded. It was so sloppy. I, I just felt I was just really annoyed with myself. I was like, why did you keep pushing your luck? I should have walked away sooner and I just kept going and going and going. And, you know, it was, it was borderline spiraling because I just couldn't stop trading. Now, finally, I ended up walking away, but, um, you know, it was just a mess. So that was yesterday. And then today, kind of similar. You know, I, I have a good start to the day. So let's look at my first trade of the day. First trade of the day was on TBIO. And you'll see TBIO is actually my biggest um, winner right here, $6,300. Uh, it's this, the third leading gapper. It's up 140%, which is nice. It's got 650,000 share float, 42 million shares of volume. And the move actually started after hours uh, for, from uh, a pop up to about 225, pulled back. And then at 4 a.m., boom, shoots up again, drops down, comes back up again, dips down, comes back up again. So right here coming into 7 a.m., that was where I took my first trades on it, on this move up to five. And that gave me initially uh, a 5,000 share position entering at about 458, selling uh, on the way up to five, about $1,500 of profit. And I got another trade on it and I got myself up 2,500 on TBIO pretty quickly. 
So then I get a couple nice trades on TBIO, and the next stock I see is GLMD, which has breaking news. This had news that came out, and so right here at 7 a.m., it starts popping up. This one squeezes up. I got a couple trades on that. And this is kind of a nice move. I mean, you know, look, it, it had a little more momentum today because it had such a big day, you know, a couple days ago, traders were quick to jump on it. But anyways, we got a nice little trade here, squeezing up to nine, pull back, back up over nine, dip down, curling here up to 1050, dip down, back a little higher. And so by 745 here, I was up $5,000. And I was like, that was a good, good 30 minute stretch trading. That was solid. And, you know, of course, I'm not going to call it a day at 730. I mean, that's pretty early. Um, but that's where I sat. So then 745, 8 a.m. comes up, no news at 8 a.m. And then I see VEEA. Hang on one second. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you'll have to wait a second, but let me just finish what I'm doing here. So this ends up um, squeezing up to a high of, oh, so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So VEEA. So this one made a big move yesterday and it was actually my redemption. This is a stock that I was green on yesterday. Uh, and so then this morning it starts popping up right here. And as it popped up, I, I jumped in. I jumped in right at 1250. I was like, okay, here we go, 1250. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking sort of like GMLD, GLMD, you know, maybe we'll get a, a retest of some of these levels. So I jump in at 1250 and it's like nothing. That was it. It hit 1250 and there was a hidden seller there. And there was a there was buying at 1250, but that hidden seller could not break. And so couldn't break and then it drops. Lost 2600 bucks on that. So it gave back half of my day on VEEA. So that was at 820. And then um then the next one is RZLV, which RZLV is kind of ridiculous. This stock went from $4 to 28 and then all the way back down. But what's weird is that the headline on this was <laughs> Resolve AI welcomes Microsoft and BlackRock's $30 billion investment in AI infrastructure as a game changer for the industry. Strategic investment opens new frontiers, da da da. Okay. So what is this? So so RZLV, a leading innovator in AI, da, 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 applauds the recent announcement by Microsoft and BlackRock to invest $30 billion in AI infrastructure. The strategic moves, da, 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 da. So what, what, what kind of headline is this? Is a headline congratulating someone else for doing something? Is that seriously all this is? Yeah, that's all it is. And you know what I think happened is I think it tricked the algo. I think the algorithm saw that and was like $30 billion strategic investment, Microsoft, uh, you know, like, at BlackRock, and all of a sudden this thing starts squeezing. So it didn't really make sense, but um, I, I did jump in. I bought uh, 283 shares of this, which was a partial fill, but I got in, I tried to get in in this area, I missed it. I ended up getting in, um, it peaks up here, and I got in for the break of 14, I got right back out, I was it like I'm in too high. I then punched the order to buy a thousand shares right here, and my order got rejected. I'm so disappointed. Right there, 1,000 shares, 13. Order gets rejected. What happens after I punch that buy button? This thing rips to $28 a share. Now, I only put the order for 1,000 shares, but still, it could have been a five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 winner. <sighs> so anyways, I didn't chase it. Uh, in total, I only made $43 on it, but that, that sure was a bit annoying. Next trade, CRKN. And this was my worst trade of the day. CRKN pops up. It's got a $10 million investment. They've got an actual headline here, secures $10 million contract, uh, not investment contract. And I saw it pop up on the scans. I saw it hit $2. It then dips down for a second. And I'm like, okay, here we go. This is a micro pullback. Buying this dip right here, bought 10,000 shares. A little aggressive. And it's a cheaper stock. What happens? I'm in 10,000 shares, dumps down here to $1.50. I lose 40 cents a share on 10,000 shares. I'm in at 89.90 and I lost 3,900 bucks. So like that, I went from up 5,000 to red about 1,500 on the day. From there, I began the slow recovery back to green. And, you know, I mean, I just, the only, I mean, I kind of had this decision of like, all right, well, have I hit my max loss? Yes, no, no, I haven't. Did I go from green to red? I did. That's a trigger. I've got to be really careful. And, you know, I just 
today was it was just sloppy um crkn i don't know i mean it just i don't know it was just big rejection and then vea big rejection zeo um so then i had i did have a green trade on tnon this one i was looking for that daily setup um this curl right here which is where i got in right here it curled but then it rejected thank goodness i took the profit when i had it prtg i took a trade on this um for the break of 12 right here or for, sorry for the break of vwap made 1300 on that a small winner glmd got a couple more trades on this one as it pushed higher here but it wasn't super easy tbio uh yeah i got a couple more trades on this one at the open as well the break of vwap setup and then those trades going up to five so you know i ended up recovering but i had to trade pretty aggressively and i kind of did have to reduce my quality threshold a little bit just to get the quantity of trades needed to get myself back to green and this is kind of the thing where you know i sort of question um this you know that strategy i mean you know obviously i'm green today so don't need to question it too much i guess but it's just a bit annoying so the issue here is that you know i started you know green up 5k so plus 5000 and then one trade and two trades now i'm minus 1.3 1300 all right so you know a, a swing from red to green could, what could i have done differently here this one i jumped in pretty quickly but you know i already had my daily goal i was feeling good this is a former momo stock this one i had breaking news i was doing a micro pullback I, you know i mean it's just the luck of the draw i think not much else to say than that could have waited maybe for a little more confirmation waited for a little more volume those are observations they were both lighter on volume i got in anyways um so maybe that was it but you know i don't know anyway so i'm not sure there's a whole lot more to read into it but then at that point it's like all right i'm one two three four trades in more or less whatever 50 percent accuracy a couple winners couple losers and now i in order to get back to here you know i'm gonna need probably 15 20 trades so this is like my next you know 10 15 trades and if i focus on a plus quality i may only have four more today hmm. is four more trades gonna get me back to there probably not i'd have to take big size and i really shouldn't because now i'm back down uh red on the day i've got to bring my share size back down what if i lower the quality standard to b you know what if i trade b quality setups well then i might have 10 more opportunities what if but my accuracy is going to go from you know 70 percent down to maybe 60 percent what if i go down to c quality setups well i might find 30 opportunities but my accuracy might be as low as 50 percent and unless i can keep my losers really tight I, that might not even be sustainable and it's not that I actually grade setups by A, B, C, D. Wait, well, I'll say this is like an A quality setup, but then below that, I'm not really saying like, oh, this is a, eh, this is like a C minus, this is a B plus. I, I don't really break them down into that level of detail, but, but I know today that I ended up trading lower quality setups. And I did that because I was in the hole trying to recover, which, you know, kind of borders on that revenge trading, over trading and it's a very fine line you know today's a day where the net result is all right obviously rallied back yesterday was a day where over trading drew me from double the daily goal all the way to break even and then back to just under the daily goal but of course churning commissions the whole way through and um i think the reality is both yesterday and today um and several days uh, last week as well in an instant i gave back half my day just like in one trade. And I think that speaks to the height and volatility that we're seeing in the market right now. You know, where a stock like TBIO in one candle does a false breakout right here and drops 50 cents a share, right, on that candle. I mean, we see moves like that and it's like, golly, you know, how can you manage risk on that? And it's, I, I genuinely don't know how to manage risk on trades like that. It's very difficult. You could be just focusing on buying the bottom of those candles, but you know what? My biggest loss yesterday was buying the bottom of a candle just like that on PRTG. And what happened? I thought I was being kind of smart. I was like, oh, look at me. I'm going to buy the bottom of this dip. So I buy right down here. What happens? It goes lower and halts down. <laughs> so that didn't work so well. Uh, you know, 
yes, the previous day, GLMD had a bunch of dips like this and just rallied back up. This one, it just halts down and I get smoked. So, you know, I mean, obviously, anytime you can get an entry close to support, you're going to be in a better position. And so I have been asking myself, well, where's support? Where's support? But the problem is that a lot of these have been moving so quickly, so fast that, I mean, it's like, if you're waiting for a pullback to support, you're just going to miss this whole move. So it's kind of like I need to jump in on these breakouts, but I also have to be really careful about overstaying my welcome. So this is kind of that, you know, that fine line that we're, that we're all kind of trying to navigate right now in a market with heightened volatility where you're trying to capitalize on these moves, but not overstay your welcome, not get caught too high. And so right now it, there's a part of me that feels like as soon as I get my daily goal, I should just call it. Now, if I'd done that uh, yesterday, I guess, well, I mean, yesterday I doubled the daily goal. So should I have stopped as soon as I just hit my daily goal? I would have left money on the table, right? You know what I mean? So I, I, I don't know. It's I'm asking questions that typically I wouldn't be asking because uh, I usually have a pretty good, uh, uh, you know, I'm a pretty good judge of when to walk away each day. But the past week and a half, I haven't done as good of a job with that. The past week and a half, I think I've had a lot of days where I overstayed my welcome. I overtraded and, you know, got myself into a bit of a, um, you know, spiral. So if we look at the month here of September, I'm sitting at $48,000 of net profit, sorry, gross profit before fees and commissions. But fees and commissions are currently $12,000 in fees, ECN fees, and $2,600 in commissions. And that's a much higher percentage than is typical. And it's because I've been churning a lot of shares a lot of these days. Average shares 400,000. I'm getting in, I'm getting out, I'm getting in. I keep getting chopped up and then over trading to try to recoup losses. So that's been a theme this whole month. If we look at the month, just last month for comparison, and by the way, my accuracy is 59% this month. Average winner, 400. Average loser, 358 or 348. And even today, I was like, all right, just try to keep your losers tighter. But sure enough, I ended up with, you know, a couple of big losses, two, three, three decent sized losses here. So we look then at last month, um, the month of August, comparatively, August 171,000 gross. Um, the commissions were basically what they currently are right now. You know, okay, 18,000. So $3,000 more than what I'm at right now. But I made 171,000. And that was for the whole month. We still have, you know, a, a solid week and a, and a day or two left in the month. And my accuracy last month was 70%. My average winners were 500. My average losers were 283. So the average losers are bigger this month. The average winners are smaller. The accuracy is lower. Why is that? I've reduced my quality standard. Why did I reduce my quality standard? Well, I keep having these days where I end up going red. And then rather than just accept that I'm red, I say, no, I'm going to keep trading. I'm going to reduce my standard so I can increase the quantity of trades that I can take. And in total, well, I mean, you, you could say that's a terrible idea, but let's not forget I'm up 48,000 net on uh, gross on the month. I mean, it's not, it's not that it's not working. Um, you know, the month is green, but it's obviously, um, and this, by the way, this actually includes um, my thick or swim challenge. But anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not that much profit. So in any case, you know, in total, it's working. The biggest thing that's kind of interesting is from the surface here, you wouldn't really see that many of these days I doubled my goal and then gave back half and then finished somewhere in the middle. Like a lot of these days, I hit the goal, gave back half. And because of that, giving back too much, I ended up churning a lot of shares and, you know, doing doing this kind of like revenge trading or some of these days I really spiraled and was very, very close to being red only to, you know, barely hold it together. So today I went red. Um, obviously, last Monday I was red and spiraled. That was a bad day. Yesterday was a bad day. Um, I didn't go red yesterday, but darn close and I was up 12,000 which made it my best day of the whole month but then you know walked away with a lot less than that so I think one issue as I kind of hinted at is FOMO getting to me a little bit missing out on GLMD right you know that frustrated me and I 
that affected my trading yesterday. Not trading PRTG very well yesterday got me annoyed as well. Um, seeing XCUR, nice big after hours move. It's annoying. Missing those. TNON, that crazy big move pre-market up to 130. You know, that was last week. That's a little annoying. I mean, look, it's great to see, but it's also like, golly, why... Why can't I uh, not seem to be in the right place at the right time to catch those kind of moves here this month? And so then I step up and then I just end up spinning my wheels a little bit. So a little more FOMO, a little more emotion. Um, it's also worth noting this is September. September uh, typically is not one of my best months of the year. It's not always the case. There have been some Septembers that were good, but it's usually not the best month of the year. Of course, uh, July and August were my two best months of the year, so I kind of did think September was going to be good because I've been in a nice streak here, but uh, it sort of felt like from September 1st that something changed in the market. Something was just a little different. September 1st was, you know, a really tough day for me, right? Went red, went green, went red, barely made it back to green. I mean, just really was spinning my wheels all day long. And then these days here following that sort of smoothed out a little bit, but then, you know, this was the day where finally things fell apart and I just went red, made this miraculous recovery to green and then two trades back to max loss and then a Hail Mary trade at the close doubled the loss on the day to 11,000. Worst day since, uh, you know, June. It's also my first red day since June, but anyways, worst red day since June. Uh, you know, so... And then the rest of the week, I mean, I had some really good days, but 105 trades there. I mean, it's just really super aggressive. I don't know. I, I feel like I need to kind of pump the brakes a little bit, just slow down. Um, Cause I'm just being, I'm trading like just too sort of like, you know, just being really too aggressive. And this market is throwing me off a little bit cause it's been really choppy. And one of the challenges today is look at, we've got four stocks up over 100% right here. So, you know, there's a lot to disperse attention. You know, you've got XCUR, which was really strong early, but then pulled back. SGN, this is a penny stock. This one, you know, I mean, it's moving higher, but um, ZEO, TBIO, I mean, GSIW. And then that's not to mention some of the others that were strong, but just aren't on the top of the scan, like GLMD or PTG, PRTG. So a lot of stuff moving today, but look at these ranges. And, and you know, GLMD was kind of like this the other day when it made its big move. You know, it just had these huge ranges. It had these huge knives, which is why I thought it wasn't trustworthy, but it just kept going anyways. You know, another one right there, another one right there. So I don't know. Maybe it's just, I don't know what the what the reason for that is, but, um, yeah, I just, you know, glass is half full. Got to be grateful. I've had a good month so far. Yeah, I've turned some commissions. My broker's happy. The exchange likes that because, you know, they make money the more I trade. It's like payment for order flow, except um, you pay for <laughs> your own order flow. There's not like the middleman that makes money off of you. You you pay your own way through. And so they just, they're happy that you're, you know, doing the volume and they're making money off of you. But, you know, sometimes it gets a little old when you're spending a lot of money on fees and, you're not getting those big trades. Uh, so anyways, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, uh, so anyways, at, at one point today, once I was, you know, I had gotten myself to, you know, up five and then I was down 1300, then got myself to up 3,500. And I said, if you get yourself up above 5,000 again, stop trading. So I was like, just stop, just walk away right there. So that's it. I said, all right, I'm going to walk away. So calling it a day here, Hey, it's a green day. It is above the daily goal. Gross. Net after fees and commissions, it'll be a little bit less. But, uh, you know, green is good. I'll live to trade another day. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe the, the best thing to do right now is just as soon as I kind of hit my goal, reduce that share size. Because I've been trying to keep share size high after I hit the goal so I can keep like building that account, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, have a big green day. But that keeps backfiring on me. So maybe what I have to do is uh, sort of the opposite. Hit the daily goal and then scale down. Reduce share size. Just for, you know, just until I start to have days where it seems like I'm worthy of continuing to trade with big size after hitting the goal. 
So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Now, um, so far today, no trades in the small account, just FYI. Um, so th there won't be a small account challenge update today. Um, account is sitting at um, $16,747. Goal is $25,000. So growing the account, which is great, but um, didn't see any, you know, it was just too chaotic today. Uh, there were a couple of trades I maybe could have taken, but I was just like, I was, and then I got myself so focused on my big account. I was really just, that ended up taking my attention. So anyways, no trades today in the small account. And then tomorrow's Friday. So might not take any trades tomorrow because there probably won't be any really big breaking news headlines, you know, Friday going into the hall and not the holiday, but just going into the long weekend. And it's not even a long weekend, just going into the regular weekend. Uh, but we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. So that's it for me. As always, manage your risk, take it slow. And um, I'll remind you that trading is risky. My results aren't typical. So make sure you're managing your risk and taking it slow. All right. I'll see you guys for my upload tomorrow.